As you all may have seen, there was a recent article on CNBC with a headline that read, Texas paid Bitcoin miner Riot $31.7 million to shut down during the heat wave in August. While the headline is misleading, it does create an opportunity to discuss how large industrial loads like Bitcoin mining interact with the Texas grid. First, to set the record straight, the Bitcoin miner in question was paid $7.4 million by ERCOT as payment for their participation in ancillary services, otherwise known as demand response or grid balancing services. To put this number into context, that is less than 1% of all funds paid out by ERCOT in the month of August for industrial participation in ancillary services. The other 24.2 million to get to the headline number of 31 million was earned by Riot, the Bitcoin miner, by selling power to TXU, their energy broker. The miner had expended substantial financial resources to secure a forward block of power known as a hedge. They purchased this power at great expense uh, at a set price off into the future. This is how they're able to sell that power back and turn off their machines, providing the grid with much needed power. These market mechanisms are not unique to Bitcoin miners. Bitcoin miners do not receive any special treatment or subsidies from the state of Texas, ERCOT, or anyone else. All large industrial loads participate in the grid in this way. The economic incentives that the deregulated ERCOT grid offers provide Texans with cheaper power than those in regulated markets. For example, Californians pay more than twice as much for electricity than Texans do because we have a more efficient market here. Bitcoin mining is a unique large flexible load, which can be a tremendous asset for Texas and our grid. According to ERCOT data, over 95% of Bitcoin miners curtailed their power consumption during winter storm Elliott from this last December. The time of day and the location above all matters when it comes to power consumption. The duck curve shows us that as a society, we use more power in the morning and late afternoons and hardly any power overnight when we're all asleep. Bitcoin mining can help flatten the duck curve on days of extreme demand. So as you can see, as a society, we use the most amount of power in the afternoons. when We're all going home and turning on our ACs and other appliances. We don't use a lot of power overnight. So Bitcoin miners can help shave off the peaks of the duck curve in the afternoons. And since they are using power overnight, they're helping to pull up the troughs of the duck curve. This is a really important mechanism for compressing the curve and creating a more efficient energy market. The energy market sends price signals so that every five minutes we know how tight power conditions are. When prices raise, that means demand is outpacing supply. And when prices fall, uh, that means there's plenty of supply and not as much demand. The more renewable and intermittent generation we have on the grid, the more flexible loads and batteries we'll need. Bitcoin mining alone isn't going to solve the challenges of high renewable penetration and the duck curve, but it is certainly one of the most significant tools at our disposal.